Now if we go back down to the microcosm, we see atoms, nucleuses of atoms, to atoms, to molecular structures, there's something else that happens. There's a deep change that occurs as we move up to the next phase. Because once you have molecules, you have the basic fundamental building blocks that make everything. So what's next? What's the next flow? What do you do once you already have the fundamental building blocks for everything? Well, at that point, there's a question that happens. At that point, there's a movement that happens. Because now, experientially, it's not just about your physical body, your emotional body, your mind. It's not just about your physics of mass, your electromagnetic vibration, the forms and the structures that you're taking on. Now, it's about what are you going to do with that? What is your purpose? What is your purpose? And at this phase in the microcosm, we see that the next layer up of structure that becomes so important is the first purposeful structure that we encounter as we move from molecules up. And the first purposeful structure that we encounter is DNA. DNA takes an assortment of molecules and now they're organized into a double helix system in which they unify to take their individual structures and form those structures into an information system that can contain the purpose, the energy, the information for life to emerge. Interestingly enough, when we look at the tissues in our bodies, we realize that the tissues can form all sorts of different structures and, and all sorts of different functions, but it isn't until those tissues combine themselves into the whole of, say, a heart or again, that those tissues fully take on their purpose. Our tissues form different organs in our body each of those organs dedicated to a specific purpose being fulfilled within our biocosm. And in the same way, we as a human body with an emotional field and a mental field take on our purpose the moment we begin to realize that we are part of a whole system of not just us, but an interaction with other beings, other people, an interpersonal layer that gives us a sense of purpose. In the macrocosm, it's reflected so beautifully because you have a star system, a solar system with planets around it, life around it, but that solar system and that star are coming together. It's not alone out there in the universe. That star is part of hundreds of billions of stars which have unified together into this spiraling union that we call a galaxy. And the purpose of this galaxy is to unify all of these stars together into a single unified coherent singularity. All of our tissues unifying into organs. All of ourselves and what we are unifying through reflection and reflection and connection with each other. This is beautiful. This is the level of the heart, the fourth level, the interpersonal level of our experience. And importantly, we notice that DNA naturally structures itself. Width of one turn of the DNA to the length of one turn of the DNA, width of the DNA to the length of one turn of the DNA, forms the phi ratio. And the phi ratio 
is very important. Phi ratio, also known as the fib part of the Fibonacci sequence, or what the Fibonacci sequence eventually becomes as its ratio gets closer and closer to phi. The phi ratio, also known as the golden mean, the golden rectangle. The phi ratio is the ratio in which plants' leaves tend to naturally grow in to gain the most amount of sunlight. It happens to be the ratio of our DNA, and it also happens to be the ratio of the spiral that we notice when we look at a spiral galaxy from the side. A gentleman named Dan Winter and the Heart Coherence Institute and the Institute for Heart Math realized that the heartbeat as an organ actually has the capacity to reach a state of vibration in the phi ratio when we're in a state of compassion or love. This is massive because it shows us specifically that not only is there something that's key to this unification process of creating organs, of creating DNA, of creating galaxies from star systems, but there's actually a specific ratio frequency through how those things unify themselves, how they come together. And experientially, psychologically, we can measure that someone's heartbeat itself begins to vibrate closer and closer to that phi ratio, the closer and closer someone is to a psychological state of compassion or love. We want to talk about a unifying purpose, a unifying energy, something that gives birth to life. We need to begin to consider what is love? <laughs> what is that unifying force? And in turn, as we look deeper into Dan Winter's work and the work of people like Nassim Haramein, physicist, astrophysicist, we begin to consider what is gravity that brings together those galaxies? What is gravity and how it relates to spin and the spiral? and the unification process that centers a planet together in its core, that centers a solar system together, that centers things in all of these different layers. But let's continue, because it's not done.